Okay, so I'm gonna talk about my uh, trip to Singapore. I took a trip to Singapore in November of 2016. I was there for about less, a little less than a week. Um, although out of those days, I really only was able to do anything for about three days because the jet lag was just so bad that I was bedridden for the first day entirely. Uh, so I. Um, I live in the Midwest of the United States, so I took a flight from Chicago through China to Singapore. I took, I arrived two days after I departed, so it was a long travel duration. I arrived very early on a Monday morning, and then I uh, slept the whole day. So, so you probably want to know like what are the best things to do in Singapore if you're just going to be there for like three days. Uh, so on my list. Uh, the first thing that I did was I went to the Botanic Gardens and I saw the National Orchid Garden, which was for a plant person like me, I am a plant scientist, kind of geneticist, whatever. Uh, that was really something special for me. I saw the orchid garden, you know, all the orchid breeding that was going on. I saw orchids of every shape and size, almost every color available. That was really uh, something special for me to see. And then after that, I left, I got lunch, and then I came back and I saw the rest of the Botanic Gardens for the entire day. I spent the whole day there. I was actually pretty tired and exhausted after that because like, coming from a cold climate like me, going into the heat and humidity of Southeast Asia was a little bit of a shock. So, you know, you have to make sure you're well hydrated and drinking a lot of water and, you know, listen to your body. And if you need to sit down or do something, take a drink of water or whatever, go into air conditioning, do so, listen to your body, like, you know, just be very careful about that because it is very easy to become dehydrated. And nobody wants that, especially when you're on vacation or whatever. So the next day, I visited the Gardens by the Bay, which is a very touristy um, area, honestly. Um, although like, you know, if you travel halfway around the world like that, it's just one of those places that you have to see. So I visited there, I saw the gardens, which were pretty cool, honestly. Uh, after that, I went to the OCBC Skyway and saw the super trees. I don't really know like the purpose of that thing. It's just kind of like a cool thing to see. I paid the $10. I was like, you know what? When am I going to be here ever again? I don't know. So I paid $10 and went up to the top and I went on that walkway, which was pretty cool, honestly. It was a little bit higher up than it looks like from the ground. So it's a little bit scary at first if you're afraid of heights, you know, like some lady there was like, oh no, I don't know, I don't know if I can walk on. I was like, you know, it's gonna be okay, just go. So that was that was pretty cool. And then I, um, after that, I went and saw um, the Marina Bay Sands Hotel, which unfortunately I was not fortunate enough to stay in that hotel. So I couldn't access the infinity pool at the top. Um, darn, oh well. Next time. Uh, I was able to just take an elevator to the top um, and I met some girl there that was like, oh yeah, like, I can like take you to the observation deck for free. So I was like, okay, you saved me like $10. It might have been even more than that. Uh, but just know that if you want to go to the observation deck, you have to pay a fee like to get a ticket there, which might be worth it because it's a special place to see if you're only going to be there for a little while. So you'll want to see the uh, the observation deck and look at everything. You know, it's it's a little bit of a unique experience there, but um, you know, actually the hotel itself is kind of a unique building. It's apparently the most photographed building in the world, so you'll have to be sure to take some pictures of that. Another place that is of interest is to visit uh, Chinatown and see the um, see the different shops that they have. They sell durian which if you have not tried before, I highly suggest it. They even have a durian store there. It was durian themed, they sold everything, coffee flavored durian, chocolate, um, durian, whatever. You name it, they got it. I actually tried some durian ice cream, which was uh, pretty tasty, but also very powerful. Like I was burping the rest of the night and I could still taste it very strongly. So just be aware of that. So another thing that I did the next day was I visited Sentosa Island and I went to the beach there. I, I know that they have a Universal Studios park there. I did not visit because I'm from Los Angeles originally and they have Universal Studios there and I'm really not into that type of thing. 
Uh, I would much rather go to the beach. And uh, the beach there was okay. Um, I probably spent a little bit too much time there, honestly. It was an artificial beach, so it's not really natural. The views aren't that spectacular. There are a lot of like uh, oil tankers and container ships offshore that can uh, kind of ruin the view. So just be aware of that. But you know, when I went, it was a Wednesday afternoon, I believe, or maybe it was a Thursday. I don't remember. It was dead. Like there was like nobody there. I was just like me and like maybe 20 other people, uh, it, which could be very relaxing. You know, it was a it was a nice. Uh, escape from the rest of the city. Um, there's also an aquarium there. I didn't visit it, but apparently it's the largest aquarium in the world, which, uh, you know, could be fascinating. Another place to visit are the uh, hawker centers, which is a, they're places where you can get really cheap food or local food in Singapore. Uh, like there was this place, my hotel I was staying in was in Tong Bahru, which is not too far from downtown. It was a good location, actually. I went to a hawker center that was across the street from there a couple times, and they had some really good food for breakfast. I was actually very pleasantly surprised. The coffee was fantastic. They had this coffee stall that people were pouring coffee. Um, it was just all around a very good experience. We don't have those types of things in the United States. We probably do, but I don't know where they are. Um, but overall, it was a very pleasant place. More than likely, you're going to be flying in or out of Changi Airport in Singapore, which is, honestly, that is a an attraction or a destination on its own. It is the world's best rated airport. They have so many things going on there. I spent maybe like four hours there just to explore the airport. Like I was like, you know, this, I've heard so much about it, I just have to see everything. So they have a sunflower garden on terminal two, I believe, I'm not sure, it could be a different terminal. Unfortunately, it was nighttime when I visited, so I couldn't see it during the day, but there was an active thunderstorm going on, so I took um, a lot of pictures of that. And uh, you can see the airplanes, they're right there. It's like, you know, it's open air, so you can hear the airplanes really well if you like airplanes. There's also a movie theater in the airport. I did not watch a movie, but you know, it's there if you want it. Uh, they had people in the airport giving out candy. You know, they always have candy when you go through immigration. Uh, that was a very nice touch. I've never seen that in any other airport around the world. Um, also, the toilets are spotless. Like, the bathrooms are the cleanest airport bathrooms I've ever seen. They had. For God's sakes, they had like orchids like growing up on the walls, like trellised above the urinals. I was like, I've never seen anything like that before. I probably never will ever again, honestly. It was just, you know, you just, the uniqueness of that airport, they put so much time and energy into making it a really positive experience for everybody. Um, it just makes it its own attraction um, by itself. So I really highly suggest taking the extra time to explore the airport. They also have a butterfly garden. I didn't see that personally. Unfortunately, they have a swimming pool outside. Darn, I missed it, but oh well. Um, you know, overall, Singapore is a really cool place to visit if you ever get the chance. You only really need like three days, honestly, uh, but the jet lag made it a little bit difficult. It was a 13 hour time change, so I was, you know, the first day I slept, you know, the last day I just kind of took it easy. But it's extremely clean, you know, if you've ever been to Disneyland or Disney World, that's, you know, think about how clean that is. That's about the same level of cleanliness that Singapore is. There are always people cleaning things. People in Singapore were very nice. I didn't really encounter anybody mean. The subway is very uh, punctual. It's, it's really convenient. It's such a special place to visit, you know, if you've never been to Asia. which I had never been to Asia before you should really visit it. Oh, also, just be aware that it is really hot and humid all year round because it is in the tropics, so make sure you dress lightly and drink a lot of water and uh, should have no problems in Singapore, yeah. So hopefully you found this video very helpful and I wish you a very, very pleasant journey to Singapore.